How to Survive in the World's Wilderness During their exodus from Egyptian slavery, Israel witnessed God's miraculous power. Under God's mighty hand, over two million souls passed through the Red Sea. Israel was a redeemed people, redeemed by blood, Passover, and delivered from enslaving bondage, a foreshadowing of the Christian's deliverance from sin's bondage. Exodus chapter 15 verse 22, New King James Version. So Moses brought Israel from the Red Sea. Then they went out into the wilderness of Shur, and they went three days in the wilderness and found no water. They were then confronted with the desolate wilderness. How were they going to get by? Our text begins with Israel having traveled for three days through the wilderness without finding water. Was this a sick prank devised by Moses? So what if they were rescued from slavery, crossed the Red Sea, and died thirsty in a foreign land? 1. Living in the Wilderness Exodus chapter 15 verse 23, New King James Version. Now, when they came to Marah, they could not drink the waters of Marah, for they were bitter. Therefore the name of it was called Marah. Exodus chapter 15 verse 24, New King James Version. And the people complained against Moses, saying, What shall we drink? The traveling Hebrews first encountered bitterness. When the sojourners couldn't find any water, they panicked and took their frustrations and fear out on Moses. They complained against Moses for bringing them to the desert, only to turn it into a graveyard for them. This is a common occurrence in life. It has undeniably bitter locations and experiences. Exodus chapter 15, verse 25 to 26, New King James Version. So he cried out to the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree. When he cast it into the waters, the waters were made sweet. There he made a statue and an ordinance for them. And there he tested them and said, if you diligently heed the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in His sight, give ear to His commandments and keep all His statutes, I will put none of the diseases on you which I have brought on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. Second, take note of the sweetness that God provided. Moses made the correct decision. He took their complaints to the Lord. God showed him a tree to cut and throw into the water to sweeten it and quench the people's thirst. Similarly, we must bring all of our adversities to the Lord. God understands how to solve our problems. He knew the location of the tree that would sweeten the bitter water. And we can be confident that God knows how to sweeten our bitter waters. A tree grows beside each bitter mirah in life to sweeten the taste. Exodus chapter 15 verse 27, New King James Version. Then they came to Elim, where there were twelve wells of water and seventy palm trees, so they camped there by the waters. Finally, note the freshness that followed. God provided Elam. 2. Feeding the Wilderness Exodus chapter 16, verse 2 to 3, New King James Version. Then the whole congregation of the children of Israel complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. And the children of Israel said to them, Oh, that we had died by the hands of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the pots of meat, and we ate bread to the full. For you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. For Israel, every day seemed to bring a new crisis. When it was not water, it was food. God was teaching His people to rely on Him for all of their needs. Nonetheless, they were complaining to Moses about their situation and threatening rebellion. It had only been a few months since they had witnessed the glory of God's miraculous deliverance from slavery in Egypt. But how quickly they forgot not only the glory of God, but also what it was like to be enslaved. When Christians face adversity and question God, they too often forget the agony of sin's enslavement 
and the miserable existence of their former way of life. Numbers chapter 11, verse 5, New King James Version. We remember the fish which we ate freely in Egypt, the cucumbers, the melons, the leeks, the onions, and the garlic. Exodus chapter 16, verse 14 to 36, New King James Version. And when the layer of dew lifted, there, on the surface of the wilderness, was a small round substance, as fine as frost on the ground. So when the children of Israel saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they did not know what it was. And Moses said to them, This is the bread which the Lord has given you to eat. This is the thing which the Lord has commanded. Let every man gather it according to each one's need, one omer for each person, according to the number of persons. Let each man take for those who are in his tent. Then the children of Israel did so and gathered some more, some less. So when they measured it by omers, he who gathered much had nothing left over, and he who gathered little had no lack. Every man had gathered according to each one's need. And Moses said, Let no one leave any of it till morning. Notwithstanding, they did not heed Moses. But some of them left part of it until morning, and it bred worms and stank. And Moses was angry with them. So they gathered it every morning, every man according to his need. And when the sun became hot, it melted. And so it was on the sixth day that they gathered twice as much bread, two omers for each one. And all the rulers of the congregation came and told Moses. Then he said to them, This is what the Lord has said. Tomorrow is a Sabbath rest, a holy Sabbath to the Lord. Bake what you will bake today, and boil what you will boil, and lay up for yourselves all that remains to be kept until morning. So they laid it up till morning, as Moses commanded, and it did not stink, nor were there any worms in it. Then Moses said, Eat that today, for today is a Sabbath to the Lord. Today you will not find it in the field. Six days you shall gather it, but on the seventh day, the Sabbath, there will be none. Now it happened that some of the people went out on the seventh day to gather, but they found none. And the Lord said to Moses, How long do you refuse to keep my commandments and my laws? See, for the Lord has given you the Sabbath. Therefore, he gives you on the sixth day bread for two days. Let every man remain in his place. Let no man go out of his place on the seventh day. So the people rested on the seventh day. And the house of Israel called its name manna. And it was like white coriander seed. And the taste of it was like wafers made with honey. Then Moses said, This is the thing which the Lord has commanded. Fill an omer with it to be kept for your generations, that they may see the bread with which I fed you in the wilderness when I brought you out of the land of Egypt. And Moses said to Aaron, Take a pot and put an omer of manna in it, and lay it up before the Lord to be kept for your generations. As the Lord commanded Moses, so Aaron laid it up before the testimony to be kept. And the children of Israel ate manna forty years. Until they came to an inhabited land, they ate manna, until they came to the border of the land of Canaan. Now an omer is one-tenth of an ephah. Exodus chapter 17, verse 1 to 7, New King James Version. Then all the congregation of the children of Israel set out on their journey from the wilderness of sin, according to the commandment of the Lord, and camped in Rephidim. But there was no water for the people to drink. Therefore the people contended with Moses and said, Give us water that we may drink. So Moses said to them, why do you contend with me? Why do you tempt the Lord? And the people thirsted there for water. And the people complained against Moses and said, Why is it you have brought us out of Egypt 
to kill us and our children and our livestock with thirst. So Moses cried out to the Lord, saying, What shall I do with this people? They are almost ready to stone me. And the Lord said to Moses, Go on before the people, and take with you some of the elders of Israel. Also take in your hand your rod with which you struck the river, and go. Behold, I will stand before you there on the rock in Horeb, and you shall strike the rock, and water will come out of it, that the people may drink. And Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. So he called the name of the place Massa and Meribah, because of the contention of the children of Israel, and because they tempted the Lord, saying, Is the Lord among us or not? No matter how bad we may feel, God has no intention of leading people out of bondage, whether Egyptian slavery or sinful shackles, to let them starve in the wilderness. By raining manna from heaven every day, He miraculously sustained the people and responded to their complaint. God, as He always does, provided for His people. Then God provided them with water to drink. The people had been in similar situations before. The problem was that they failed to learn from their previous blessings. They had good reasons to believe, but they continued to complain. Before we pass judgment on Israel, perhaps we should examine our own lives and explain our own lack of faith in not accepting God's promise at face value. Have we learned anything from God's previous record of delivering us from our wilderness wanderings? Perhaps Israel's problem was that they still had the spirit of Egypt within them rather than the spirit of God. Strike the rock. God instructed Moses. As a result, water was released for Israel. God not only sustained His people, whom He led out of bondage in Egypt, but He was also patient with them, even in their rebellious moments. The incomparable patience of God with us cannot be overstated. When we come to Jesus, He quenches our soul's thirst. 3. Battling in the Wilderness Genesis chapter 36, verse 12, New King James Version Now Timnah was the concubine of Eliphaz, Esau's son, and she bore Amalek to Eliphaz. These were the sons of Adah, Esau's wife. Genesis chapter 36, verse 16, New King James Version Chief Korah, Chief Katam, and Chief Amalek these were the chiefs of Eliphaz in the land of Adam. They were the sons of Ada. The Christian life is full of both blessings and trials. One battle Israel had to fight was with Esau's descendants, the Amalekites. Not only did Israel discover that basic survival needs, such as food, water, and clothing, necessitate faith in God, but it also discovered that God's people have natural enemies who harbor an unwavering hatred for them and God's ways. Exodus chapter 17, verse 10 to 12, New King James Version. So Joshua did as Moses said to him and fought with Amalek. And Moses, Aaron, and Hur went up to the top of the hill. But Moses' hands became heavy, so they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat on it. And Aaron and Hur supported his hands, one on one side and the other on the other side. And his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. Joshua went out at Moses' bidding, fighting under the authority of God. Then they did the unconventional thing by taking Moses to the top of a hill overlooking the battlefield. And so it was, when Moses held up his hand, that Israel prevailed. And when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. Chapter 17, verse 11. When Moses' arms and hands grew tired of holding his rod aloft, Aaron and Hur propped them up as he sat on a stone. Their help exemplifies the spiritual assistance that intercessory prayer provides 
as we engage in spiritual warfare. God hears his saints' prayers. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 to 20, New King James Version. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, take the shield of faith, with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one, and take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. And for me, that utterance may be given to me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains, that in it I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. 4. Witnessing in the Wilderness Exodus chapter 18, verse 9 to 12, New King James Version. Then Jethro rejoiced for all the good which the Lord had done for Israel, whom he had delivered out of the hand of the Egyptians. And Jethro said, Blessed be the Lord, who has delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptians and out of the hand of Pharaoh, and who has delivered the people from under the hand of the Egyptians. Now I know that the Lord is greater than all the gods, for in this very thing in which they behaved proudly, he was above them. Then Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, took a burnt offering and other sacrifices to offer to God. And Aaron came with all the elders of Israel to eat bread with Moses' father-in-law before God. Finally, Israel discovered that the wilderness could teach them how to be witnesses to God's miraculous glory. Consider the evidence Moses was able to present to his father-in-law, Jethro. We too are in the wilderness for one reason, to bear witness to Jesus. God does not intend for us to struggle the entire journey. On the contrary, God's promise is to restore our souls, provide us with green pastures, and provide us with peace besides still waters we are able to persuade others to join us on this journey. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 8-9, to New King James Version But, beloved, do not forget this one thing, that with the Lord one day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning His promise, as some count slackness, but is long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance.